Lord of the Flies video, I'll talk to you about democratic backsliding. But first, we need to know what democracy is. Democracy is defined as a system of government whereby population votes for eligible members to run the state and take care of things on their behalf. That's a democracy. But what are the characteristics of a democracy? Well, first of all, democracy has regular, fair and free elections, whereby every few years the people, the population, vote for someone to take charge and run things on their behalf. Another characteristic is that everyone's voices are considered equal when voting in an election. It's not that some people get two votes and, another, and others get half. Everyone has an equal say. Added to this, in a fair democracy, there's freedom of speech. People can criticise their governments and their parties if they want without fear of punishment. And added to this, there's fair and free media. It's not that the government own just one media source where everyone has to get their news from. There are plenty of news sources from different companies which have different perspectives and different beliefs. And finally, there are at least two parties in a fair democracy. If there's only one and you only have one option, it's not a democracy. You need to have choice. These are the characteristics of a democracy. And countries fought and tried hard for many, many years to get to the point of having a democracy. Democracy is often considered the pinnacle of a country's freedom. Those who have it have to be careful because one day what happens if all voices are not equal? Or perhaps suddenly the news is owned by the government and you could, people can only get news from that one source. Maybe suddenly there's only one party to vote for or they temporarily stop elections. Or perhaps governments punish people for criticising them. This means that democracy has backslided. A country got to the top, they reached the democracy, they reached freedom, and all of a sudden, new parties come in and take small things away, which means the country's no longer completely democratic and free. It's not the opposite of democracy, it's just an erosion. Small things have been taken away. So, why do democracies backslide? Well, the easy answer is that the rulers want to cling on to power. That's it. It's as simple as that. So there's a few examples of how democracies can backslide, how they can fall backwards and not be as free as they once were. And I'll go through some of these now. The first is that there is a threat and democratic freedoms have to be temporarily put on hold. Now, an example, a modern example, might be the COVID-19 pandemic. Many countries, England being an example, had to lock people in their homes. They had to say, stay at home, and if you leave your home or if you meet your friends and family, there will be punishments and fines. Now, this isn't freedom. The people of England were no longer free when this happened. Now, it was obviously for a greater cause. It was to protect people and stay safe during a pandemic. But people, had to di people did have to give up some of their freedoms during this difficult time. Another example might be after the 9-11 attacks in America. After this, many government agencies, such as the NSA and Five Eyes internationally, came up with new acts which meant it was okay to spy on the whole population, not just the select few. Governments in England, for instance, after the 2016 Investigatory Powers Act, can listen in to anyone's phone call in England, check your Facebook messages, see what you're sending in emails. Now, Big Brother is watching. Democracy, in a way, has backslided. People are, were not as free as they once were, and the government has taken a role in stopping and curtailing this idea of being able to say whatever you want to whomever you want without people listening. Another example might be that suddenly all voices in a population are not considered equal. Now, this is happening with India. There, are, there is a new citizen amendment bill in India, which basically means if you are a Muslim and you don't have the right paperwork to be a citizen, as many people in India don't, you aren't allowed to take part in elections. So suddenly, Muslims without the correct paperwork cannot vote anymore and they cannot get the correct paperwork if they are a Muslim whereas other uh, religions such as Hinduism, Sikhism and Christianity are able to get such paperwork. As I said, not all people, not all voices in this political system, in this democracy are suddenly equal. Another example of a democracy backsliding is basically calling out fake news. By saying that mainstream media 
that reputable news sources, as is the case with the New York Times, for instance, are fake news and making people lose faith and trust in the news, saying, don't listen to them, they're all fake. You can only listen to me, your leader. This is an example of a democracy backsliding. People lose, uh, people lose confidence in the free and fair media and are told to only listen to the one person who has ultimate power. That's definitely not democratic. Another example might be censoring the news. Now, there's a famous case in Thailand where you're not allowed to criticise the royal family or even the government at the moment. And when the BBC ran one news story, the government targeted Thai BBC and shut them down. But it's not just countries like Thailand. Recently, Boris Johnson, the leader of the uh, leader of England, refused to be interviewed prior to an election. Now, if he's not interviewed, the media cannot ask him questions. And in a way, he is censoring any negative, um, any negative story about him because he refuses to be interviewed. Similarly, Donald Trump banned certain news organisations such as CNN from press uh, press briefings in the White House. Again, censoring himself so that people can hear uh, any, any other side of the story he didn't want them to hear. Now, the final way a democracy can backslide is through something called populism. Now, populism is a kind of complicated um, ideology for me to explain. A populist is someone who basically says that the establishment, the old political elite, are different to us. They don't represent us. Now, this is the case with Donald Trump in America, Duterte in the Philippines, Marine Le Pen in France, Bolsonaro in Brazil, Nigel Farage in the UK, and even, to an extent, Bernie Sanders in the UK. By saying the old political system doesn't work for the common person, and I am also a common person, makes people lose faith in politics and lose faith in democracy itself. Populism is like the Pied Piper leading the rats away from traditional democracy and saying, don't trust anything, only trust me. I am the best leader. I am one of you. I am the same as you. This is populist rhetoric. Don't be scared of the old elite and just listen to me. That's not very democratic at all. So these are the ways a democracy can fall backwards. But how do they backslide in Lord of the Flies? Well, the boys certainly do set up a democracy. They have a conch, which you have to hold in order to speak. If you have the conch, you get permission to speak. Also, they have hands up, like at school. They also vote for a chief. These are all democratic things. They hold meetings where people can be heard and give their opinion. And finally, they distribute power. For instance, Ralph gives the role of the hunters to Jack. They all take turns in keeping the fire alight. These are the signs of a democracy. But we do begin to see in Lord of the Flies these things backsliding as they fall further away from democracy and civilization into savagery. So how then do they backslide? In which ways? Perhaps it's through fear, through not having everyone equal, through saying the old ways don't work, for you, by using populist rhetoric, in what ways does democracy backslide in Lord of the Flies?